Uh, good morning, my name is Randall Rader from Public Works Stormwater Drainage. Uh, this morning we're going to be going over the John Deere uh, Backhoe 310SG model. Uh, the primary purpose of this day to day, um, the front is mostly for loading, scooping, where the rear digging is for actually ex excavating or you can also use it for uh, movement of material. For storm purposes, uh, much like the loader, the front bucket will be used to, to push or to pick up material. The back can be used as well to, uh, to shift or move or pick up and help load uh, material as well. All right, so first things first, we're going to start with a uh, brief overview, walk around of the, uh, of the backhoe. We're going to look at you know various things, inspection points, grease points, uh, maybe safety choke points, um, typical inspection uh, things you should do every time before you operate this vehicle. Much like on the uh, loader that we described, we're going to start with the front bucket and we're going to talk about the the ram pistons on either side. Purpose of these is to open and close the front bucket so that you could actually clamp down on something and pick it up if you needed to. So we're going to check the top and bottom connection points, making sure that they are uh, positively connected, checking the, uh, make sure that they're greased but not over greased. Um, and then we're looking at the cylinder itself, the ramrod, making sure it's not damaged, not bent up, and then the cylinder, make sure it's not leaking, dented, damaged, or anything. And then we're looking at the hoses, the connection points, making sure they're tightly connected, not leaking, and following the hoses um, to ensure that they're not bulging, dry rotted, leaking uh, either. All right, moving around here, we're going to check our uh, cylinder used to, for lifting. All right, so we're going to check again the bottom connection point and our connection point on top, making sure that they're both obviously connected. Uh, well, well greased and lubricated, and we're checking the entire piston as well. Uh, looking at the housing, making sure it's not damaged in any way, not leaking, and then checking the, the piston rod, making sure it's not damaged, dented. Moving to the back of it, we're looking at the hoses and the hose connections, making sure that they're not leaking, making sure that they're positively connected tight, and that the hoses aren't dry rotted excessively uh, or bulging out or anything like that. Like on any other vehicle, we're going to check the tires on this. So looking at the tire itself, we want to make sure there's obviously uh, sufficient tread on the tire. We're looking to make sure that there's nothing lodged in the tire, any types of uh, foreign matter. Looking at the uh, sidewalls, inner and outer, making sure they're not bulging, um, excessively dry rotted or cracked. We're also looking at the rim, making sure the rim is in good condition. No non-factory welds, no dings, dents, cracks. Uh, moving in, we're checking the uh, lug nuts on each making sure the lug nuts are in place and tight, uh, positively mounting this, uh, this tire and rim to the vehicle. All right, moving back, we're gonna check the next uh, cylinder. So we're checking the same way, checking our connection points, making sure that it is positively uh, mounted to the vehicle, uh, making sure that the points are greased, uh, but not excessively greased. Looking at the casing, um, and at this point, the rod is actually contracted. So we're checking to make sure that there's no damage to the to the housing itself. We're also looking at the hoses, making sure they're not damaged, excessively dry rotted, uh, broken, leaking, as well as the connection points, making sure they're not leaking and that they are tight. Uh, moving up, we're also going to check our, our arm uh, swivel point, making sure it's greased and we don't see no apparent damage to it either. All right, as we're here, we're looking, moving our way back, we're just checking our steps, making sure they're not damaged, they're not broken, uh, making sure we got some pretty good uh, tread on them so that we don't slip or fall when we're moving in. Okay. All right, we're also checking our front glass, making sure it's not damaged, uh, broken, cracked, uh, checking for cleanliness. And then we're also looking at our uh, windshield wiper. Uh, we'll check the operation once we get inside, but from the outside, we're looking at the wiper itself, excessive dry rot, um, and the actual entire uh, wiper arm. Also checking our lights up top, our amber light and two of both of our headlights making sure they're not damaged, broken, uh, making sure they're positively mounted to the vehicle, making sure there's no condensation uh, in the lights as well. All right, so for, for this, we're not gonna go through each individual spot. Just remember, you would have to check uh, both sides of the vehicle the same, and you would check all the tires similar. So again, you would check, you know, tread, uh, the rim, the lug nuts, um, everything like that on, on all the tires going around. All right, now I'm gonna check uh, my driver's side outrigger. Um, I want to make sure my pins are in place and that the, the cotter pins are in place that hold the pins in. I'm looking at it for apparent damage, um, maybe shifted, maybe bent up. I'm also going to look at my pads to make sure that they are in place. Uh, that's where you get your traction and stability. I'm also going to look at the cylinder. 
um, making sure that there's no damage to it, no leaks, checking my top and bottom connection points as well. Looking at my hydraulic hoses, making sure that there's no apparent damage to the hose, no excessive dry rot, no cracks, no leaks, and at the uh, connection point that goes into the cylinder itself. All right, now we're gonna check the back windows and glass, uh, making sure that they, they're not broken, they're not cracked, checking the clarity and cleanliness, checking our windshield wiper, much like we did on the front, we're gonna look at the actual uh, wiper blade, make sure it's not excessively dry rotted or damaged, checking the wiper arm. We're also gonna check all of our rear uh, lights. We have red and amber lights up top. We're gonna check those for cleanliness, clarity, ensure that it's the right color lens in each place, uh, that they're positively affixed to the vehicle. And then we also on each side have two rear uh, headlights and one slightly on the side. Uh, we're gonna check those the same, well, uh, same way, excuse me, uh, making sure they're positively mounted to the vehicle, check it for uh, clarity, uh, cleanliness, and that they're not broken or damaged in any way. Uh, while we're here, we're also gonna focus on our, our, our rear boom uh, connections. So we're gonna look at all of our hoses, making sure the hoses are not damaged uh, excessively um, dry rotted, leaking in any way, and we're going to check our connection points to make sure they're not dripping or leaking. We also have a, uh, a ram cylinder here, so we're going to check it the same way we have the other ones, making sure there's no damage to what we can see, checking the piston arm for, for damage, uh, making sure the cylinder's not leaking, and we're checking the connections all around it, going into it, making sure they're tight and that uh, they're not leaking as well. By right, checking our, our bucket attachment, we wanna make sure our pins are all in place um, and that they all caught or pinned in to make sure the pins cannot fall out. Looking at our connection points as well, making sure that they're all lubricated. Um, not over lubricated, but make sure that they are sufficient. Looking at the uh, larger ram here, making sure that there's no damage to the housing. Um, looking at the connection point for the hoses, making sure they're not leaking and that they're tightened. Also making sure the hose isn't uh, damaged in any way, excessive dry rot, bulges, cuts. Moving down, we're checking the, uh, the piston itself, making sure it's not uh, damaged, no dents in it, uh, no bends. And we're just gonna check the, the general connection point at the bottom, making sure that it is bolted tight in place and that it's greased but not uh, over lubricated in any way. All right, and as I move to the passenger side, uh, everything we've already discussed on the driver's side, you would also check over here. I'm going to go through the things that uh, are different. Passenger side, we have obviously our fuel tank. Um, with our fuel tank, we're looking to make sure there's no damage to the tank itself. We would actually physically uh, look underneath, make sure it's not leaking. Uh, there's no damage uh, that we can see underneath. We also check the cap, make sure the cap's on nice and tight. Um, while we're here, just like on the other side, we would also check all of our hoses for connectivity, uh, any leaks and any damage as well. At this point, while I'm here, I'm going to pop the hood. On this model, it's a uh, small little handle right here. You push it in and Good. lift it up. All right, while I have the hood up, I'm going to check my fluid levels. Right here is my transmission dipstick. The yellow is my oil. The yellow cap is where I would fill oil if it's necessary. Uh, and I'm also going to just be checking my random hoses, making sure there's no leaks. Uh, no excessive dry rot, um, anything of that nature. I'm also going to check my alternator. I'm making sure that the wires are connected, no uh, burnt wires, frayed wires. I'm going to move around and check the belt, making sure that the belts are not, that they are uh, proper tension, but that they're not cracked, excessively dry rotted, or damaged in any way. All right, as I move to the top, I have my uh, hydraulic uh, where I fill and check my, my levels, and then I also have my windshield washer fluid here. Uh, while I'm up here, I'm also just giving a visual overview, making sure there's nothing lodged in here, and just looking for any apparent uh, type of damage or debris. All right, I'm also gonna check my, my coolant level, make sure the coolant level is sufficient, checking the hose coming to and from, making sure there's no leaks, no damage to the hose. Um, also, my radiator, ensure that you do not open it, obviously, when it's hot, because it would be pressurized and you could be burnt. Checking down where my fan is, my fan belts, making sure the blades I look like they're in good working order. And as I said, no debris, no trash up in the way. I'd also finish checking the rest of my belt uh, on both sides, making sure that there's no damage to the belt. Still checking for um, cracks, excessive dry rot. Uh, after that, I would continue checking any hoses that I see, 
making sure there's no damage to them, and checking just all my, my general connectivity points to ensure that there's no uh, apparent damage or missing bolts. All right, to drop it, there's a bar that locks in place. You pull it out, slowly let it down, slam it down at the end, make sure it locks in place. That'll conclude the exterior uh, walk around. Now we'll move inside the cab and check the uh, basic controls. All right, now I'm gonna move on into the cab. All right, since we're going to an elevated uh, platform, ensure you have at least three points of connection, either two hands, two feet. And then we'll move inside. So now that we're inside, we're gonna go through our basic uh, overview of our controls of the, of the operation. Basic, uh, basically first will be the gear selector. All right, up is gonna be forward. Back will be reverse, center is neutral. Like on the loader, uh, one is going to be your slowest speed but most operating power. Four will be your quickest speed, uh, less operating power. All right, moving around, you have your front headlight switch. All right, up obviously on, down off. Your hazards, your front windshield washer, and then your front windshield wiper. Um, over on the other side, you uh, right here is your fire extinguisher, positively mounted. We would just check to ensure that it is uh, safe and in the operating range. As we move around, uh, the red one is our parking brake to the left towards on, right is towards off. Uh, we have our digital display, our engine coolant temperature, our oil temperature, and our fuel gauge. We also have our uh, rear headlights. And then our side lights, our temperature and climate controls, horn, our rear, rear uh, window and window control. And then this is uh, for comfort, this is your seat, helps uh, uh, rise and fall the seat. And then your emergency beacon and the ignition. Okay, hold on. Okay, where are we going? Uh, these two controls here for the front bucket operation. Um, if you've seen the controls on the loader, they operate uh, pretty much exactly the same. You would pull back, it would lift your bucket, push forward would drop it. Um, left and right controls your pitch. And the handle on the right is exactly like on the loader, it controls what they call the, you know, the clamping operation, uh, forward and reverse to open and close your bucket. All right, your seat control on the left, you gotta lift that up, which rotates your seat so that you can move back to the digging uh, operation and we'll go through the controls there. On the left side here, we have our stabilization controls. Um, you would place them down and then that would also help uh, elevate you, but also balance you out depending on what type of ground you're on. We also have a th throttle control right next to it labeled with a uh, turtle and a rabbit. Whenever you're done, always ensure this is back in turtle or else your engine will be revved up as you're trying to drive. All right, our basic uh, digging controls here. This is a lock that locks the boom in the forward position. So you actually have to pull that, hold that up uh, as you operate the boom to move it out to get it to unlock. All right, the left control here is our, is our main boom uh, that you push forward, it bring, pushes it out. You would pull back and it brings it back in. Your left to right moves your boom left and right. The right stick here controls pretty much, if you think about it, your top piston. You push it out and your arm, the second arm is gonna go out. Uh, back, it's gonna bring that second arm back in. And then your bucket control, you see if you move it to the right, it drops your bucket out. Back is in. And then you have one last control, which is our foot pedal. If you step the foot pedal forward, you see that it extends the boom out. And then if you step on it in, it pulls your boom back in, which gives you longer reachability. Uh, now we're going to start it up and actually go through the operation. All right, so I already made sure that my front bucket is on a good uh, solid surface and that my parking brake is on. I'm going to slightly throttle up. I'm going to place both of my stabilizers down on the ground by pushing the handles forward. But I want to make sure that I'm even, that I'm on a good stable surface. Next, I'm going to pull the handle, the safety lock, and pull the boom back. You see the lock lift up. 
and then slightly push the boom forward, which will release the lock. All right, again, my left control forward. You see the main boom operating? Back, pulls it back towards you. All right, left, move, moves the entire boom left. Right, all the way back to the right. This boom will go all the way to a 90 degree angle. Next, my right control controls this, what you call the second arm. Push it up, it'll stick, it'll push it out. As you pull back, it pulls it towards you. While I have it up, I'm gonna show the foot control. If I step on the foot control forward, you see they do, it does what's called boom out. And use my heel, pull it back. That is your boom in. Gives you uh, added reach. Lastly, my, my bucket control to the right opens my bucket. Bring it back to my left. will actually close the bucket, uh, which would be used if you're digging or trying to grab and move material. So now I'm going to move my bucket back up and in. All right, ensuring that I leave myself enough room for my lock. Make sure it's locked in place, that my boom is all the way up. At that point, I would drop my stabilizers, bring them all the way back up to the uh, raised position. And lastly, always remember to throttle all the way back down. Uh, now we'll give a visual representation of the uh, front bucket. As I stated before, this uh, works exactly like the loader. You pull the left handle back. Now to raise your uh, lifting arm and bucket up. As I pull it inside towards me to the left, controls my pitch back. Push it out, it pulls, pushes my pitch down. All right, while I still have it up, um, I'm gonna show you the right control, which opens and closes my bucket. All right. Um, next, as I go down, um, this this backhoe kind of has a uh, a guide tool on my right hand side right here, which you can only see from in the cab. Lets you know when your bucket is actually level because there's a line right here. It's uh, is also equipped with what they call a float motion. So when I push my bucket all the way down, um, I can jam the handle forward, which would be good. Um, and it'll put it in float motion, so maybe if you're back dragging or trying to pull something back, it'll allow your bucket to float on the ground and stay level. All right, this will conclude our uh, walk around inspection and basic operation of our John Deere uh, 310SG backhoe. Um, Again, with this, remember this is considered uh, heavy equipment machinery. You need to have a hard hat if you're working anywhere around it and your full PPE. Um, and with that, again, last thing, remember safety first when you're in and out of the cab, three points of connection. With that, have a good day.